Hello, my name is Adam Myers, and here's my presentation on the results of my BioBullets project. First up, we have the cottontail rabbit, which is my vertebrate animal. Um, the scientific name for the species is Silvigeus floridinus, um, and it was identified using the seek identification tool. Now, unlike other rabbits, um, cottontails don't burrow underground. Instead, they will find shrubs or just other areas uh, for shelter above ground. Um, and in terms of adaptations, cottontails are known for, well, primarily two things. First, they have uh, highly evolved strong back legs, which they use to uh, increase their speed and to jump high, uh, as well as they have auditory adaptations in the form of larger ears, which allow them to be a lot more sensitive to different sounds. Um, Cottontails, uh, in terms of human interaction, are typically seen as pests. Um, they are known for damaging lawns and crops and just generally not being the most positive of animals to have around. Um, an interesting fact about cottontails is that they will often re-swallow their own feces to aid in digestion. Um, assumedly, assumedly, this has to do with maintaining a certain amount of ba bacteria in their gut microbiome, so that way they can more easily digest things. Next up, we have the Eastern Carpenter Bee, or Xylocapa virginica. This was also used, identified using, uh, actually, this was identified using insectidentification.com. Uh, now, the Carpenter Bee uh, will acquire energy through the nectar of flowers or other plants. Um, usually through pollination. However, this bee in particular is a bit different because eastern carpenter bees will occasionally bore or drill holes into plants to essentially suck nectar out of them in a way that's a lot different from how other bees would do it. Um, additionally, female carpenter bees have the adaptation of stingers, which allow them to ward off predators. Um, Males do not have this adaptation, however, in this species. The eastern carpenter bee is actually seen as critically important to humans because it is, uh, as previously mentioned, a pollinator, which means that a lot of plants rely on bees such as the eastern carpenter bee in order to sustain function. And of course, we as humans rely on a lot of plants for our agriculture. Um, and lastly, female eastern carpenter bees are generally far stronger than their male counterparts, uh, which means they're able to carry more pollen and just generally do things that would require more physical ability. Next up, we have the anise scented sage, uh, or Salvia garan garanitica. This was also identified using seek identification tool, um, and it acquires its energy through photosynthesizing sunlight, as most plants do. Um, this species can either live in full sun or partial sun, and in or partial shade, sorry, um, and it requires mo relatively moist soils for its growth. Um, it depends on water uh, pretty heavily compared to most plants. Um, an interesting fact about this plant and its relations with humans is that it may have been used by Native Americans as a sedative. Um, particularly in Southern and Central America, um, which ties into uh, one of its uh, additional names, which is, it can also be called the Blue Anise Sage or the Brazilian Sage. Next up, we have the Common Ivy or Hedera Helix. Uh, this was also identified using the Zeke identification tool. This usually grows in areas with moderate shade due to a distaste for general sun, for direct sunlight. This isn't to say that it doesn't require or like a lot of light. However, uh, the UV radiation of direct sunlight is not good for this plant. Um, it has an adaptation to grow over top other plants, essentially giving it a competitive aspect and allowing it to block out sunlight from other plants. Um, and take that sunlight for itself. Um, because of this, it is seen as an invasive species or a pest by humans, because it's also not native to this area. It is sometimes referred to as English ivy as well. Next up for our fungus, we have the Eastern American jack-o'-lantern or Omphalotus illudens. 
This was also identified using the Seek identification tool. Uh, and it's most commonly found in September, October, the fall months of the year on decaying hardwood and other just dying material. Um, there are less than 10,000 specimens of this species. There are less than 10,000 examples of this species that have been found in the world. And the mushrooms interactions with humans are actually pretty negative. Though not deathly in humans, it can cause cramps, diarrhea, and additional abdominal pain for several days. Overall, um, I would say that the identification of our species went relatively easily. A lot of this is, of course, in thanks to the Seek identification tool, as well as the various online resources we used. Uh, Fungi were typically the hardest organisms to identify. Uh, in some cases, we could only get down to, let's say, the phylum level. Uh, however, we were able to identify the exact species for some of them. And if trying to complete an environmental catalog, um, I would say that scientists would probably want to focus on densely planted spaces, as in general, those were the easiest to find wildlife in. Um, for example, a lot of our specimens came from the Hort Woods area, especially down on the ground level around the bases of trees and whatnot. Now for section two, um, we were to propose uh, a suggestion for future research. Um, so we decided to use the Eastern Carpenter Bee as our organism of focus for this section. And our question that we aim to ask is to what level are Eastern Carpenter Bees critical to the survival of flowering plants such as Salvia garnetica? Now for our proposed experiment, uh, we came up with the idea of having two enclosed greenhouses, which would be set up identically with different species of plants. Uh, same positions, same water supply, same soil used, same like light distribution. However, there would be one change. One of the um, greenhouses would also contain a hive of eastern carpenter bees. And our hypothesis for this experiment would be that the greenhouse containing the eastern carpenter bees would generally have a higher survival rate of its plants than the one without due to the process of pollination. Now for section part, section two, part two, um, we sought out a related experiment, which essentially tried to test something similar to our proposed experiment. And we were able to find the following experiment in which passion fruit flowers were measured for both their sugar concentration and the amount of flowers that they had on them. Um, as a function of the amounts of carpenter bees which visited those plants. So as you can see from over here, the results suggested that the passion fruit flower depends heavily on pollination from the carpenter bee as um, a method of survival. In general, it showed that um, the, the plants that were most visited by eastern carpenter bees were the ones that would have the most flowers or the ones that would have the highest amount of sugar in their um, supply. Um, and that can be seen over here in this figure in which the pollinated flowers um, had the most pollinated flowers have the highest number of bee visits per 15 minutes. And here are the sources that we used for all of our information. Thank you for taking the time to watch.